Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this video, we're going to discuss the Voyager Airshaper Formula 1 car. So as you may have seen, we launched a design challenge called the Formula 1 Challenge, where we are virtually taking part in Formula 1 and we want to optimize the aerodynamics of a styling model, which wasn't necessarily made to perform well in terms of aerodynamics, but now we're actually going to tune the model to make it actually have proper aerodynamic properties. Um, the way we went about it is that we launched reference simulations at two resolutions. One was around 10, 12 million cells, and the other one was 75 million cells. And we shared the results with the public, and we asked the public to come up with new ideas to inspect the results, analyze the results, and come up with ideas on how to improve it, or even create 3D models. Um, and we had, or we still have, um, a Reddit channel on our Reddit Airshipper channel. We have um, a post discussing the Formula One challenge, and we had tremendous response. We have uh, videos um, being made by people with a full analysis of the airflow, downloading simulation results, coming up with um, new suggestions on how to actually modify the car. This has been super helpful for us to come up with new ideas. Uh, all the underfloor was discussed, um, looked at the front wing, um, the vortices coming off um, the streaks, and so on, uh, sectional analysis of the airflow. So this has been fantastic. Um, a second um, input that we got was from Bosur, um, who completely redesigned the three wing of the car which we actually uh, used for the redesign of the car um we also got a full PDF document with analysis of the front wing, stating that there's flow separation at the bottom, which is not necessarily the result of the geometry, but more a case of the meshing being stuck between the elements. So that is something we fixed as well. Um, we got input on um, how we can actually improve the flow around the tires. Um, we actually got a suggestion as well um, to, um, to design actually uh, plates around the wheels to optimize the airflow. Um, how to actually change the shape of the side plates uh, to improve the flow. Um, we had extensive feedback on how to optimize the um, well, the diffuser veins, streaks, whichever you want to call them, um, to create more vortices, to create more uh, downforce on the car, and so on, side pot optimization. So we're going to go over all of these suggestions in this video to see how it actually improved the car. And this is my short overview. Um, at the front of the car, um, let me see. So if you compare this car to this car, so this is the original car on the left, where we see that we had a drag coefficient of um, 0 0.89, let's call it 0 0.9. Um, we actually had a slight reduction in drag coefficient, just to jump to the final conclusions here. And we had a drag coefficient, a uh, lift coefficient of minus 1.5, which is actually not too bad to start with. <clears throat> and based on all the input of the community, we got it down to minus 2.5, which is actually a massive change in downforce. So the guys at Voyager, the people who actually are, are creating this model and modifying it uh, for Airshaper, did it a tremendous job in combining the input from the community with ideas of their own and uh, automatic shape optimization that we ran at Airshaper to get inspired. So let's go over some of the details. Um, the front wing was actually completely redesigned. As you can see on this car, we don't have a connection between the top element and the nose, uh, which was changed on this car. We also had increased spacing slightly, um, partially to overcome the meshing issue. Otherwise, we had to go to like half a million or half a billion cells. Um, but in reality, it was actually quite small as well, this gap. So increased the gap. Um, the side planes were also changed. We ran optimizations, and the optimizations told us uh, to change the angle of the side plates. Um, an interesting uh, results, an interesting result was that for more downforce, it uh, suggested uh, to curve it one way, and for less drag, it suggested to curve it the other way, which probably relates to how much air you actually force onto the front wing and how that air interacts with the tire that comes after. Um, so as you can see here, uh, first of all, at the bottom, we had massive flow separation behind the first element of the front wing. This is all mostly gone. We have a bit of flow separation, but this is just local. Um, the flow stays attached um, across the entire wing, all the way to the trailing edge of the third element, which is really nice. So if you look at the surface pressure, we see that on the original car, only the first element was generating massive amounts of downforce on the new car. You can see that uh, the entire wing is contributing to downforce, uh, most of it coming from the first two elements. Um, 
And then if you go to the side plates, we see that uh, on the original design, we have quite a bit of flow separation here. Um, and because we actually changed the angle of the side plates to be a bit more outward, um, we reduced the virtual angle of attack of the air versus this side plate, and this reduced flow separation. We also added a more realistic shape um, of the side plate uh, in accordance with some of the existing cars. Um, if I go back to my overview, uh, so we implemented the, the design of Busor. So big thanks uh, to Busor. Uh, the design proved to be massive, a massive improvement. Uh, more spacing between the elements and the side plates uh, were actually turned inward at the front and a bit outward at the rear. Then let's move on to the strakes. Um, so on the original model, if we compare again, just a second, if I minimize this one. So in the original model, we saw that at the strakes, um, so these entry uh, parts of, let's say, the underfloor geometry, we had flow separation ev every time at the outside of the streaks, indicating that um, the air is actually wanting to go lateral to the sides of the car, and this created an angle of attack which is too high, and you get flow separation as the air wants to curve around these side plates, uh, sorry, the streaks. What we also saw is that at the front, because it was a visual styling model, um, these were actually too thick. So you had like a, a kind of a front face on the streaks and the air was hitting them and this also caused separation. So we did two things, or actually the guys at Voyager uh, did a massive job um, to improve this. One is to actually curve them more inward. So as you can see here, they're almost parallel to the, the, um, the center line of the car. Over here, they're pointing more inward, more aligned with the natural airflow or inflow angle of the air. What we also did, also based on feedback of the community, is to change the angle of um, the geometry further downstream. So here, uh, you can see that they end up in a pattern which is more aligned with the car. And here, they're actually curving outward, um, which is good uh, because this creates extra vortices, which creates more downforce um, underneath the car, which is also one of the suggestions uh, made on the Reddit channel. So massive thanks again. This was a very valuable suggestion. Um, and this again, if you look at the uh, surface pressure pattern you can see the huge difference um, in pressure that we have underneath the car so we have much better airflow we have much lower pressure and thus much more uh, suction effect underneath the car so this again um, contributes to the massive jump in lift coefficient or downforce coefficient if you want uh, from 1.5 to 2.5 so as you can see really a huge difference uh, all the way leading up to the rear diffuser which also benefits from the improved airflow at the entry actually of the underfloor if you go back to the or overview um those that was the streaks um then the barge board was modified um that's also a minor change that we added and we also added the bib which is kind of like a scoop uh if you want um if you look at the entry of the central part of the underfloor here. Um, here, the air can just hit it and then go underneath or curl around it. Uh, whereas on the new design, you see that we have this scoop here, um, yeah, if, you, if you want to call it that way, which helps to actually uh, force more air onto this geometry, which helps to generate downforce. It creates a different vortex structure underneath the car and so on, instead of just having the air pass underneath without it doing much. So this really helps um, to create the right velocities in the right places and the right pressure uh, areas. So if you want, you can look at the pressure map as well. We'll make this project public so you can check it out. Uh, just uh, check the link in the description. So here you see you have high pressure buildup in, on the vertical plane, which doesn't really contribute to drag uh, or to lift or downforce. Over here, you can see that you have at least one bit of geometry have, which has an upward facing area. And if you have high pressure on this area, that means downforce on the car um, as it pulls the whole geometry down. Um, if you look at the side pots, you can still see um, that we have challenges here. Um, we haven't optimized these uh, a lot. Um, we added some new um, geometries um, around this area also, I think, for the mirror maybe. Uh, but you can see that we created some new problems here. Um, so we do need to further optimize the side pots so that, so that we have less flow separation in that area. So there, uh, that's one of the areas where we actually uh, reduced performance. Over here, you can see that the entry of the underfloor we had some flow separation here. Um, it has been slightly improved, um, but still we can improve it even further by changing actually the geometry, the local angle of attack of the air, um, so that it doesn't have to jump up too much um, and actually cause flow separation here. Um, 
if I go back to the overview, um, the nose angle was also changed. Um, so that's a minor change. It's not having a, a massive effect on the uh, air um, aerodynamic performance. But if you see, if you look at this from the side view, you see that we have this slight S shape uh, still on the nose. And this one was updated to be more aligned with, with some of the more common designs um, on, on uh, the cars that we see in the field today. So that was it for a short overview of all the image, all the modifications that we did. So as you can see, we started off with a styling model um, and then we took it all the way to an advanced simulation and, and used the results. Uh, the community gave us a lot of input on how to improve the car design. And as you can see, uh, by adding some minor tweaks, you can dramatically changed the performance of this car. So we had a win on all areas. We reduced the drag uh, slightly um, from 0 0.89 or 0 0.9 uh, almost uh, to 0 0.87, which is slight drag reduction, which means we will go faster on the straight lines. And we also had a massive increase in downforce, uh, going from a lift coefficient of uh, minus uh, 0 0.5 to minus 2.5. So in terms of absolute forces, uh, if you look at a car, um, this one, of course, for a given velocity of 200 kilometers per hour. This one had a downforce of around 5,000 uh, newtons, which is 500 kilograms. And this one has 8,000 newtons, which is 800 kilograms without a drag penalty. So that's very important to note. Uh, normally, you have a trade-off between downforce um, and drag which is probably the case once your uh, design has been refined. But going from a styling model to a more aerodynamic model, you can see that you can just win on all areas if you tackle it properly. So again, a massive thanks to the community, to everyone who has contributed to our Reddit channel. Um, if you want, uh, we can provide like a certificate of accreditation to show that you had a valuable contribution, uh, which you can then use to put in your LinkedIn profile or put in your CV and so on, um, if you had valuable input. Um, and what we can also do, just ahead of the last GP, uh, we will not stop here. Um, if if the audience wants it, we can continue and actually add like a second era update. This was the first one, era update one. If we want, um, together with you, we can go for a second era update, implement some more of the changes that were suggested by the community, because we didn't really have time to implement everything that was suggested. There's still plenty of room for improvement. We will make the new simulation public. So again, we can use this as a new starting point. Thanks a lot for all the contributions. I'm really looking forward to all of the comments coming in on how we can further improve this design, or if you have comments on how we actually handled this, just let us know, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Drop a comment. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and see you soon. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.